I'm Dr. Brett DePoister with the Aquarium Vet, and in this lesson, I'm going to go over nitrates in the aquarium. As we covered in previous lessons, nitrate, or NO3, is the end product of the nitrification process. Nitrate is much less harmful to our fish compared to ammonia and nitrites, and it can even be beneficial as a fertilizer for plants growing in your aquarium. However, with time, nitrate levels will build up and can reach levels that will have a negative impact on the health of our fish. Different species of fish have been shown to tolerate varying amounts of nitrates. As a matter of fact, some species of fish may not even show clinical signs at concentrations as high as 100 parts per million or even higher than that, while other species of fish might be impacted by levels that are much lower than this. Therefore, as a general rule, it's highly recommended to keep your levels below 40 parts per million. In reef tanks, the nitrate should be kept even lower, ideally below 5 ppm, and many hobbyists even strive to maintain their nitrate levels between 0 and 1 ppm. The biggest impact associated with high nitrates on our fish is immunosuppression, or reducing the fish's ability to fight disease, and this predisposes them to secondary infections such as bacterial or parasitic infections, and we will cover this in future lessons. Nitrates have also been shown to cause generalized changes to the cells of most organs of the fish, including the gills, the skin, kidney, liver, and the intestines. One of these generalized changes is causing hyperplasia, or excessive tissue production. This picture here shows a histological section of normal, healthy gills. Now, histology is a diagnostic technique that allows us to examine the cells that make up an organ under the microscope. As we'll go through in detail in the fish anatomy course, the gill epithelium of the secondary lamellae pointed out here is only a few cell layers thick. This allows for efficient oxygen diffusion as well as ion exchange for osmoregulation and waste excretion. Long-term exposure to poor water quality, such as high nitrates, can result in this excessive growth of the gill epithelium. Ultimately, the fish's body is trying to protect the gills, but this unfortunately results in a reduced ability for gas exchange to occur, and it also makes maintaining osmotic balance much more difficult for that fish. Now, as we can see, direct exposure to high nitrates and other poor water quality parameters will have a direct physical impact on the fish and their overall health. The great news is, is that it is completely avoidable by keeping our nitrate levels low, as well as our other water quality parameters, such as ammonia, nitrites, and pH, and making sure that those are all in check. This is most easily done by performing regular partial water changes. Water changes can be performed daily, or weekly, or monthly. It really depends on your aquarium and the amount of nitrates that are present. If you have ongoing problems with high nitrates, we need to evaluate the amount of food that you're feeding out. Overfeeding ultimately leads to more nitrates being produced in the water. Another major factor to consider is your stocking density, or the amount of fish that's present in the aquarium. The more fish there are, the more nitrates that are being produced. Now, when we have high nitrate levels, in order to deal with that, we need to increase the frequency of your partial water changes to help keep those nitrate levels down. Other things that we can do is increasing the number of plants in a freshwater tank or the use of algae turf scrubbers in marine tanks. We can also use nitrate absorbing media uh, and add that to your filter. There is even the option of using a denitrifying filter to further break down those nitrates, although these are generally used by more advanced hobbyists, but this could be something that you would like to research a bit further. As with all the water quality parameters we discussed, it is important that you routinely test and record the nitrate levels in your water so you can determine if the frequency of water changes that are required in order to keep your nitrate levels nice and low. So that covers the nitrates in our aquariums. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next lesson.